Previously, we used the transfer function block to add a disturbance to a manipulated variable. You can also use the transfer function block to model black box processes that you cannot describe rigorously, but whose response characteristics are known. Time varying processes are described by differential equations, and a classic way of analyzing them is by converting them to the Laplace domain. When you convert a linear process to the Laplace, or frequency domain, you end up with the output of the process being equal to the product of the input and a quantity called the transfer function. This transfer function describes the dynamics of the process at hand, and more complicated linear processes can be described as a combination of transfer functions. If two processes take place in series, the overall transfer function is the product of the two individual transfer functions. If the processes take place in parallel, the overall transfer function is the sum of the individual transfer functions. While this classic method only works for linear processes, many nonlinear processes can be approximated as linear, particularly if they don't move far from a set point. The transfer function block can be used to simulate many common process characteristics. For example, the lag term is frequently encountered when modeling processes. If a process can be described by first-order lag, we often call it a first-order process. Another commonly encountered term is the integrator term. A process that can be described by the integrator term is often called an integrating process. The response of a first-order process that's at steady state to a step or instantaneous change in the input is an exponential approach to its new steady state value. An integrating process responds to a step change by outputting a value proportional to the input and the time since the change. As an example, let's imagine a process with a constant feed inlet liquid, but its temperature can vary. You want to model a holdup tank that will dampen the temperature fluctuations. Controllers on the tank ensure that the liquid level in the tank always remains constant, so flow in equals flow out. You also know that the holdup tank was repurposed from another process on the other side of the plant, causing a delay in any response. We can model the tank directly in Heiss's dynamics, but let's say we didn't know many details about the tank's volume, just its response time. In this case, a transfer function block can be used. I would expect this tank to have a first order lag with delay. This can be determined by fitting data or from theoretical considerations. The change in enthalpy of the tank is equal to the enthalpy in minus the enthalpy out. The enthalpy in the tank is a product of the amount of material in the tank, heat capacity, and temperature in the tank. The enthalpy of the inlets and outlets are products of the stream's flow rate, heat capacity, and temperature. If we plug those relationships in, then subtract by the steady state enthalpy change, we get the equation in deviation variables. Taking the Laplace transform tells us that the outlet temperature, Ts, equals K over tau s plus 1 times the inlet temperature, where K is 1 and tau is the amount of material in the tank divided by the flow rate of the inlet and outlet streams. Remember that these variables are in the Laplace domain and still need to be converted to the time domain. Notice that tau has units of time. Tau is called the time constant and, in a first order process, is the amount of time that it takes the process to reach 63.2% of its steady state value when a step change is applied. K is called the process gain. In this case, it is equal to 1, but in other cases, it may have a unit and a different value. The term K over tau s plus 1 is our transfer function, often abbreviated G of s. This form of the transfer function is called a first order lag, but there are others. We will work with one other one, a delay term. The process we are modeling can actually be thought of as two processes in series, a well-mixed tank and a pipe. Since they are in series, the overall transfer function, g of s, is the product of two individual transfer functions. For the tank, we have a first-order lag, 
and for the pipe, we will have a delay. Open the blackbox.hsc sample file. This file simulates a tank with a constant rate of inflow and outflow of water. A strip chart is pre-configured to plot the inlet and outlet water temperature. I know that each degree of temperature increase in the feed will cause the outlet temperature to increase by one degree, so the process gain is one over one, or one. If we had a different process, and a 1 degree increase in the input caused a 2 psi increase in the outlet pressure, the gain would be 2 over 1, or 2. If I didn't know the gain, I could input a step change to the plant and wait for the process to stabilize, then measure the corresponding change in the outlet. Run the case, then change the water feed temperature from 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Stop the simulation when the outlet temperature approaches its steady state value. The plot looks like a first order response, so let's model it as one. I made a step change of 10, and the steady state output increased by 10, so the gain is 1, as expected. Now, let's calculate tau, the time constant for the process. It looks like the process hit 63% right around here, which is 10 minutes after the step change. If the data was noisy, we'd have to use other methods to estimate tau, but since the response is clean, we can use 10 minutes for tau. You could follow a similar procedure to estimate the parameters for an unknown process. Since they are determined, you are ready to model the process using the transfer function block. Open the model palette and insert a new stream and a transfer function block. Open the transfer function's property view and set the process variable source to the feed stream's temperature. Then set the OP target to the newly created stream's temperature. Go to the Parameters tab and set the PV and OP minimums to 50 degrees Fahrenheit and the maximums to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Click on the Lag tab and select the Lag 1 checkbox. We want a gain of 1 and a time constant of 10 minutes, so we can leave the defaults. Let's also add a delay to correspond to a long pipe. Go to the Delay tab, select the Delay checkbox, and change the dead time to 2 minutes. Before running the case, create a strip chart with the inlet and outlet temperatures so we can monitor what's going on. Click the Strip Charts button, click Add, and add the inlet and outlet temperatures from the streams attached to the transfer function block. Click Done, then display the strip chart. Before we look at our results, let's make sure the case comes to steady state. Change the water feed temperature to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, turn off the real-time checkbox, and run the integrator for a few seconds. When the case reaches steady state, recheck the real-time checkbox and change the water feed temperature back to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. We can see that the output is delayed by two minutes and then responds like a first-order process.